Hello, I'm Dr. Naveen Pemaraju, Associate Professor in the Department of Leukemia at MD Anderson Cancer Center. Today, I'll be discussing with you treating BPDCN with conventional and intensive chemotherapy. From a historical perspective, there have been several conventional chemotherapy or intensive approaches used for patients with BPDCN. I want to walk you through some of these as they still have relevance in the modern era. The first aspect of this story is that of the fit younger patient with BPDCN. Our group and others have most commonly and most successfully used an ALL or acute lymphoblastic leukemia based approach for these patients. This is in the absence of a clinical trial or targeted therapy and has been used from a historical perspective. The most commonly used of these regimens is the MD Anderson regimen of hyper-CVAD or hyperfractionated cyclophosphamide based regimen. This alternates importantly with methotrexate and ARAC in alternating cycles, cycles one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Usually eight cycles of intensive chemotherapy followed by a maintenance chemotherapy regimen. Now in the hyper-CVAD alternating with methotrexate ARAC, the key to remember is this actually includes two intrathecal or lumbar puncture chemotherapies per cycle, usually in the first four cycles or in all eight cycles, depending on the risk. Are there other regimens that have been used for fit younger patients in the ALL paradigm? There have been several others. One key in the modern era is adding something to the hyper-CVAD backbone. And most recently, our group published in the New England Journal earlier in 2019 a letter or brief report adding the novel agent venetoclax or BCL2 inhibitor to the hyper-CVAD backbone in three patients. Now finally, the key to this ALL-based approach is to include some form of intrathecal chemo and treat the BPDCN patient as one would in the high-risk ALL paradigm. Now turning to another commonly used approach worldwide is the AML or acute myeloid leukemia based approach. This approach involves several variations. The so-called seven and three approach, also known as three plus seven, is an AML regimen that's commonly used worldwide. It involves cytarabine and an anthracycline. However, this usually results in suboptimal responses in many of our patients with BPDCN and great toxicities as it is not well tolerated in the older patient. There are other AML treatment clinical trials, both on and off protocols, that our colleagues have used to varying levels of success. The take home point of the AML based approach is to use an induction style therapy as one would use in either the older AML or the younger AML age appropriate to get the patient's bone marrow blasts down into a so-called remission state but again, this is limited by toxicities. What to do in the older unfit patient? This is a more commonly seen or so-called real world patient that many of you will see in your clinic. Well, these also have been unfortunately suboptimal approaches. One is the lymphoma-based strategy, which historically has been the CHOP-based chemotherapy regimen. The problem with this regimen, again, as you've heard from the AML and ALL, is that even if one achieves responses and you can get a complete remission with this, is that oftentimes these remissions are short-lived and when the relapse of the disease occurs, this can be quite aggressive. And so the bottom line with the lymphoma-based regimen is there's not enough data yet to know definitively if this is a viable approach for the patient with BPDCN in all cases. Again, another aspect of the older unfit treatment paradigm for BPDCN is with hypomethylators. The hypomethylator class is headlined by azacytidine and decytabine, FDA approved in the United States for myelodysplastic syndrome or MDS and used all over the world and in the United States off-label for the treatment of the patient with older AML. In these approaches, there have been two aspects. One is the older frail patient in which azacytidine or decytabine is used as a single agent, and two, using one of these agents as a backbone to combining with other approaches, again, such as venetoclax, as is borrowed in the older AML recent FDA approval approach, or other agents. And again, as you've heard earlier, while some of our patients with BPDCN may be able to achieve a remission, oftentimes these are short-lived. 
In thinking about curative options, one of the main curative options in 2019 remains that of stem cell or bone marrow transplantation. As is usually the case in other aggressive leukemia states, this is usually reserved for the younger fit patient, and ideally the time to go to stem cells generally thought of as the first complete remission. However, of course, in BPDCN, patients are usually older, unfit. There are not many patients historically, and so there are not great amounts of data to tell us about the timing of stem cell transplant. In the older patient for whom stem cell transplant is offered, various approaches include reduced intensity chemo programs or even autologous auto stem cell transplant for the older unfit patient or those with skin only disease. As with many items in BPDCN, further data will be exciting to have as it can directly be applied to patients in the clinic. Other issues with stem cell transplant, of course, are the inherent morbidity and mortality with the procedure, the timing, as we mentioned, autologous versus allotransplant, and even this emerging area of targeted therapy or so-called post-stem cell transplant maintenance therapy after the transplant is completed. And so these data will be eagerly awaited over the next four to five years. So in summary, as we think about the modern approach to intensive chemotherapy to BPDCN, we've moved away from localized therapies, radiation and skin-directed therapies as the primary treatment, and recognizing BPDCN as a systemic disease, we have moved more into the sort of multi-agent systemic chemotherapy regimens as we discussed, usually involving intrathecal chemotherapy and many options as we discussed altogether. The issues with these options are they are limited. They're limited by the fitness of the patient in terms of ECOG performance status, suboptimal and transient responses in many other patients. And so in our approach at MD Anderson, the most common chemotherapy intensive approach in the absence of clinical trial targeted therapy would be a high-risk ALL paradigm, hyper CVAD alternating with methotrexate era C, involving rigorous intrathecal chemotherapies for prophylaxis, and then moving patients quickly to an allogeneic stem cell transplant in the first remission if they are fit enough to qualify. Also considering autologous stem cell transplant in the specialized subset of patients. And finally, in the targeted therapy era, we now note that a phase 1-2 clinical trial with Tegraxafusp or SL-401 led to FDA approval very recently in December 2018 and now represents a viable standard of care for many of our patients with BPDCN. Thank you very much for your time and attention and good day.